London announces that it will arbitrarily extend certain tariff reductions for Northern Ireland. The EU Commission is threatening legal action and old rifts are opening up in Belfast. The dispute between the UK and the EU over customs formalities in Northern Ireland is escalating. The British government announced on Wednesday that it would extend relief for deliveries to Northern Irish supermarkets until the beginning of October. This transition phase should expire at the end of March. Talks between the government and the EU Commission about a postponement did not initially produce any results last week. The responsible Commission Vice President, Maros Shevchovic, accused London of violating the provisions of the Northern Ireland Protocol and international law with this unilateral action. The process represents a clear departure from the constructive approach that has prevailed so far, complained the Slovak, and the fact that London had not informed the EU in advance was also disappointing. Shevchovic threatened legal action before calling Lord David Frost, the minister responsible for EU relations, on Wednesday evening. The conversation between EU Commission Vice President Maros Shevchovic and British Brexit Commissioner David Frost did not bring any reproachment, said a Commission spokesman on Thursday. We are now examining the next steps. The legal instrument would be the arbitration procedure provided for in the Brexit Treaty. Frost later announced that his government was not breaking a contract but was only planning temporary technical measures to give companies more time to prepare for the customs formalities. Yeah, breaking in a certain way, in a limited way. Yeah, yeah. The extensions were limited to what is absolutely necessary and would allow London and Brussels to calmly discuss further constructive solutions without disturbing the everyday lives of the people of Northern Ireland in the coming weeks. The dispute is sparked by the provisions of the Protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland, part of the 2019 Withdrawal Agreement. It is intended to prevent customs officers from having to control trucks between the Republic of Ireland and the British Northern Ireland. Therefore, the Protocol stipulates that Northern Ireland will continue to adhere to EU product rules and customs regulations despite Brexit. The logical consequence, however, is that deliveries of goods from England, Wales or Scotland to Northern Ireland must be checked. After all, everything that lands in Northern Irish ports can be transported to the south of Ireland and thus the EU internal market without further controls. The new customs bureaucracy has already led to a shortage of goods in Northern Irish shops. There are even transition periods until the end of March. but. And, and until then, freight forwarders who transport animal food from Scotland, Wales or England to Northern Irish supermarkets will not have to prove that the goods meet EU health standards. And parcels to Northern Ireland whose value is less than 160 euros do not require a customs declaration. That will change after the transition phase comes to an end. Johnson promised, of course, that there would be no customs border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the kingdom an outright lie, but those who fight for Brexit easily get off the lips, as experience shows. At the same time, this lie puts Johnson under a lot of pressure. Controls, checks and bureaucracy are inevitable, and yet Johnson must make it appear that he can fight and avert it. Otherwise, he would disappoint his loyal Brexit supporters. It is precisely this image cultivation that the government's decision to extend unauthorized customs relief and thus break agreements from the Northern Ireland Protocol. Johnson and his rowdy confidant Lord David Frost, the minister responsible for the EU, can stage themselves as upright fighters against insubordinate Brussels regulations. But business associations and the British government warned that companies need more time to prepare and have called for this and other transition periods to be extended until at least the beginning of 2023. You had four years! But that is far too long for the EU. In addition, EU representative Shevchovic demands that the British fully first implement some obligations from the Northern Ireland Protocol. For example, checkpoints at the Northern Irish ports are not yet fully operational. Until last week, Michael Gove was the uh, contact person for Shevchovic in the British government. But Prime Minister Boris Johnson decided that his confidant Frost would take over this role at the beginning of March. Frost had already led the negotiations on the trade agreement with Brussels and is an advocate of an uncompromising line. He now lives up to his reputation. 
The government can unilaterally extend the transition period because the controls at the port are carried out by British customs officers. London can therefore instruct officials not to ask truck drivers for additional customs documents even after the end of this month. Johnson also wants to expand the transition phase for parcel post to Northern Ireland on its own. It is the second time that London wants to override the rules of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Last summer, the government presented a law that would have had this effect, but later diffused the draft. However, this maneuver does not serve businesses and citizens in Northern Ireland. Because the EU Commission cannot and must not give the impression that such provocations pay off. Otherwise, the Union would only encourage Johnson to continue to focus on confrontation. After all, the dispute over customs regulations in Northern Ireland will certainly not be the last point of contention in this difficult relationship between the newly divorced. As a matter of principle, Brussels must therefore show its toughness, even though the issue is to give in. The transition periods must be extended for the sake of the people and the peace process in Northern Ireland, but at the same time this must not seem like a triumph for the notorious liar and gambler Johnson. A balancing act and the price of failure would be high. Ireland's Foreign Minister Simon Coveney called the new move anything but helpful. Northern Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister Michelle O'Neill made a similar statement. She belongs to Sinn Féin, the Republican Party, which is close. Um, the closeness to Ireland on uh, Northern Ireland is important. Aline Foster, the provincial head of government, welcomed the move. Foster is the head of the Unionist Party DUP, which prefers close ties with Great Britain and likes every move against the EU. The Social Democrat MEP Bernd Lange from the European Parliament, the chairman of the Trade Committee, called the announcement made by London a very aggressive act and not a good start for David Frost. And now, according to a report, pro-British uh, pro militias, militias in Northern Ireland are suspending their support for the Good Friday Agreement because of the Brexit deal. Meanwhile, the EU is threatening the UK government with legal action. After many years of violence on the island of Ireland, the Good Friday Agreement of 1998 brought peace between pro-British Unionists and Irish Nationalists. Because of the dispute over the consequences of Brexit, the conflict threatens to break out again. pro britarian militias said in a letter to Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and that was quoted by the Belfast Telegraph, that they would temporarily suspend their support for the Good Friday Agreement of 1998 because of concerns about the special arrangements for Northern Ireland after the British exit from the EU. They called for changes to the Northern Ireland Protocol in the Brexit Agreement to ensure unhindered trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Unionist groups such as the Ulster Volunteer Force, the Ulster Defence Association and the Red Hand Commando pledged to pre present their resistance in a peaceful and democratic way. This warning increases the pressure on Johnson, Irish pr uh, Prime Minister um, Michal Martin and the EU to come to an agreement. Keeping the peace without giving the UK a backdoor to the EU internal market via Northern Ireland was one of the most difficult tasks in the Brexit negotiations. Plus, the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the European Union has already led to far-reaching economic structural changes and will continue to do so in the future. The future framework for economic relations between the United Kingdom and the European Union has now been laid down in the Comprehensive Trade and Cooperation Agreement, the TCA, which entered into force provisionally on January 1st. Although the TCA avoided a hard Brexit and trade in goods without uh, tariffs and import restrictions will continue to be possible, economic players in all sectors face new challenges. The economic consequences for companies in Hamburg, however, just one other example I always bring, have been so far been moderate, which is due to intensive preparations, conduct, uh, preparations conducted. Traditionally, economic ties between the Hanseatic city of Hamburg and the United Kingdom have been close. The Hamburg economy is therefore affected by Brexit in a variety of ways. 
According to data provided by the Office of Statistics North from February 22nd, um, United Kingdom was Hamburg's third most important trading partner in 2018 in terms of exports and sixth in terms of imports. The United Kingdom is one of the port of Hamburg's most important trading partners. In 2018, goods worth around 4.2 billion euros were exported from Hamburg to the United Kingdom and goods worth around 2.3 billion euros were imported. The export volume increased by around 120 million euros compared to 2017, while the import volume decreased by around 150 million euros compared to the previous year. According to the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce, around 1,000 Hamburg company, companies maintained business relations with the United Kingdom before Brexit. Around 200 of these companies maintained a permanent local presence with a branch office via a joint venture, a representative office or a production facility in the United Kingdom. Conversely, around 70 British companies had a registered office in Hamburg. Almost all sectors are involved in business with the United Kingdom, from industry and banking to logistics and foreign trade. Companies from the United Kingdom have invested almost 4 billion euros in Hamburg, corresponding to around 13% of all foreign investment in Hamburg. Hamburg firms have invested over 7.5 billion euros in the UK, that's 20% of Hamburg's foreign investment. An expert report commissioned by the EU Committee of the Regions concluded that 17.5% of Hamburg's economic output in the manufacturing sector may potentially be affected by Brexit. Even before January 1st, there has been a slight decline in exports to the United Kingdom by Hamburg companies. The forms and certificates that now have to be completed to prove compliance with the rules of origin of goods pose further trade barriers. This may cause difficulties for small and medium-sized enterprises, the so-called SMEs, that have previously only traded within the European Union and now have to build up additional expertise in trade with non-EU countries, for example in customs clearance. There have not been any major disruptions so far and prolonged traffic jams at the, at the borders have not yet formed. The medium and long-term consequences of Brexit are not yet fully foreseeable. The information situation at British customs and British companies seems to be problematic so far. Some difficulties arise in the logistics sector. There are also complications in some cases for companies that regularly cooperate with British employees. Overall, Hamburg companies have so far reacted pragmatically to the new economic situation. It seems to have paid off that Hamburg has been preparing intensively and systematically for the Brexit for a long time. Hamburg has prepared extensively and systematically for Brexit. In principle, every company was called upon to prepare for changes, especially in the area of trading goods and depending on its future involvement in the United Kingdom, company size and industry. For example, companies were recommended to add appropriate clauses to contracts, analyze their supply chains and prepare contingency plans for Brexit. A survey conducted by the Association of North German Chambers of Commerce and Industry in 2020 on the level of preparedness of companies for Brexit essentially showed that just under half of the companies considered themselves very well or rather well prepared, but less than 10% rather poorly prepared. In September, the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce also published the results of a survey on the state of preparation of Hamburg companies with business relations to the United Kingdom for Brexit. The majority of Hamburg's companies with business relations to the United Kingdom felt well prepared for Brexit. It is particularly positive that this also applies to small and medium-sized enterprises. Information on this can be found on the website of the Hamburg Chamber of Commerce in German language if you do speak that or if your browser can translate that you might have a look as well. And if you want to stay informed, please subscribe to my channel and to my other channels. I'll see you in my next video. Auf Wiedersehen.